Hey, Richard. Hey, Adam. How are you? Perfect. What is JCon? So JCon is a Java community conference that we uh, do for about five years now, since 2017. And uh, this year we'll be uh, back in person. Uh, we are back and uh, we will be in Cologne at a new, uh, very shiny cinema. It's called Cine Dome. Um, I have to mm -hmm. uh, pronounce it correctly. Cine Dome. I think it's a pun on the Kölner Dome. Um, and I always say dome because I always hear Thunder Dome, you know, Tina Turner in my head and Mad Max. Mad, 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 Mad Max. Okay, this is a very fresh Mad Max conference, what I understood. Yeah, right? absolutely. But, uh, we don't have the fighting, though, so don't bring your weapons. There's outside, o outside the cinema. Uh, yes, yes, yes. But please don't bring your, uh, like, pikes and, and whatnot and forks and, and stuff like that. But hence it is in a cinema, so I could actually do it remotely again because no one cares, right? So you can stream on the big screen. No one sees, you know, the speaker. Oh, <laughs> there's some op optimization optimization potential. Uh, I don't, I, I don't think that it's uh, so big. So people can still see you. We have a camera that will that will uh, give you a real ah. big hat, so you have a real big hat on the screen. So I really, really have to go to Cologne. Yeah, now. you have to come. So and you, you're on the on the schedule. You know that, right? And now, now I know it. <laughs> but I attended the Jacon several times. The only pity is that it's not in Bavarian Forest. This is always you know, the running running joke because uh, it is, uh, yeah, and we were near to, 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 to us. But uh, there are no cinemas in Bavarian Forest. So therefore, we had you know, to pick one, a big one in Cologne. This is what you always told me. Yeah, that. that's right. It is really hard to find, to find a location for such a big conference here somewhere in the woods. So you have, you know, to go to Cologne. And, and back then it was in Dusseldorf, I think. Yes, right? because it's not only a different, a difficult to find a good location in the woods, it's also mm -hmm. difficult to find one in Dusseldorf. So we moved from Dusseldorf because uh, the uh, cinema that we used before um, was at capacity. And now we have a really nice uh, cinema in Cologne, the, the Cinedome. And it's, it's really great because it has uh, a really high ceilings and it's very open. It has a lot of light. So it's uh, it's a very new and very shiny cinema, and uh, it will give us enough space to do the hallway track, which is is very important for us. And of course, they have nice uh, theaters where we have really big screens, so you can really see what what is going on in the IDEs of the people that doing the talks, the speakers, and you can really focus on live coding and stuff like that. And you don't have to rely on slides. I know you hate slides, so it's it's a good conference for you. So uh, sometimes I, I'm, I'm doing slides because uh, for agenda slides are actually excellent, but uh, yeah, they should be not necessary for 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 certain things. Um, one story, maybe I never told you this. Um, I I attended JCon as a speaker several times, and I think after the first time, I was contacted by a company, and they say, "Wow, uh, yeah, we saw you at JCon." They were they were like, "No, this JCon was like uh, the you know the world conference, which is of course it is, but uh, they were really." said, okay, they, they, they were really um, amazed that I was a speaker at the JCon. And then I got a contract because of that, just because I, I, I was at the JCon. So I was really surprised. I said, okay, this was actually interesting. They say, yeah, we saw you at JCon. So yeah, cool. And um, so um, I will go to Cologne and expect a different experience for me, you know. Yeah, super. Uh, it's great, great to hear that. And uh, of course, it's good when uh, people that uh, invest in the conference, as uh, speakers do with their time and, and their expertise, uh, have something from that. So I love that. That's, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, what I have also have to say, um, this is we switch a little bit just for you, you know, the, the order of events here at the AHXFM. But uh, I was in your headquarters, uh, in your company once, uh, or multiple times, actually. And what you showed me, you know, the Sun Microsystems machines and the Java logos everywhere. Yeah. So what I like uh, about the JCon is, this is uh, uh, driven by Java enthusiasts, actually. I know you. I know Marcus Kett. I don't know. He's also somehow associated. No, both are you are Java fanboys, I would say. And this is what I really appreciate. And I also attended the online conferences, the JCon online. And they were also great. So they were, you know, I had a chat with the moderator. So I really, I really appreciated the entire, the entire experience. So I'm really looking forward to Cologne. So uh, yeah, um, and we will meet in Weiden anyway soon. So uh, this is a almost Bavarian forest, I would say. I, I know it's not incorrect, but uh, for me it is like. So um, so looking forward to to this as well. Yeah, 
This is like digital craftsman craftsman day. Yeah, right? there's a there's a lo day. local thing. We do a digital craftsman day in in Weiden. And uh, thank you for coming there. And uh, also thank you for the great feedback um, for JCon World. So the online conference is still there. So if you are not able to come to Cologne uh, in June. Uh, we are happy to have you at JCon World, which will be in November. Last year we had 2,600 uh, attendees from six continents and 80 plus countries from all over the world. So this is the online thing that you can join online. And if you want to to have uh, in-person contact and uh, uh, ask questions to Adam directly um, from the cinema floor, come to Cologne in june and and join us there and uh I, yeah of, of course i have to mention all java user groups uh get free tickets um so you don't have to pay if you are in the java community and um that this is really great so make sure to to be there and uh make sure to book a ticket because they are limited yeah and regardless when my session is i will reserve some time so if you have questions uh, after the session just uh, join me we go outside and i can try to answer all your questions you have right so this is uh, this is the benefit of online conferences be uh, sorry of uh, in person conferences because the online conference is sometimes hard to have ch to chat afterwards because uh, yeah because you no know, the software is still not there yeah absolutely cool so now back to the important topics so this was like you know uh, uh, a side a side note what was your first computer, Richard? So, my first computer was actually a uh, uh Intel processor uh, with a uh -huh. DOS operating system, and uh, it, it had a, a hard drive, so I could play games. So it was fun, and uh, this this had a this machine had a really long life because after I was done with it, it resurfaced as an ISDN router because back in the day in in you know in the woods, Bavarian forest. There was no uh, broadband internet in the early 2000s, so we, we had to rely on ISDN. And there was a, a really cool mm -hmm. a Linux based floppy disk router, and you could, could have a. You, you would insert just a floppy disk, and you didn't need a, need a, a hard disk, and the, the mm -hmm. 486 would boot up. And there was an ISDN extension card, a PCI installed, and then the whole family could use the internet, and we didn't have to fight about. Who who gets the ISDN connection? So this this was, ah, was great. Yeah, exactly. And this ISDN is German ESDN. I think it is done. There's no more ESDN anymore. It was like uh, oh, was it digital actually. There's, I think there's a uh, digital version for uh, compatibility reasons for people that still rely on on systems okay. that need ISDN. Yes. Yeah, and before ESDN there was uh, the normal collection, connection, and ESDN had the uh, um, I think the uh, the advantage that you could have multiple numbers. I remember right. This was the big advantage of ESDN. Yes, multiple numbers, and you had two channels with uh, uh, sixty four uh, kilobytes, so you could yeah exactly use dual channels. So you had to pay twice, but it was twice as fast. And you had a, a, a D channel, which was only for like uh, system communications from the, the, the phone provider, but you could hack that and could chat on it. So you don't, uh, didn't have to pay. Nobody heard that. I never did that. But yeah, sure. yes, it was possible. Yeah. What I had, I remember right now, my very first, uh, how it is called, um, internet connection for my server was ESDN actually. Oh, wow. So I, I yeah, uh, I, I bought it prior to 2000 something like this and it was exactly the same so i had you know the isdn card without the router and then used a linux driver and th this was a long long time i actually used the isdn until dsl was available but this worked well this must have been very uh, expensive ah uh, it was uh, uh two three hundred euros a month or something like this yeah. it was not uh, it is crazy but uh for business was okay i would say yeah, this was the time when you when you could get a flat rate. There was there was some time when there was yeah. like you had to pay by the minute, and this was this was annoying. No, no, by the minute, I, I got a flat rate, and I had uh, to pay for the uh, no static IP address, mm -hmm. and yeah, but this is uh, far less expensive than Kubernetes, for instance. Right? Uh, absolutely. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. So, um, are you that young, or you started, you know? <clears throat> Maybe both, but no, I, both, I, both, I think exactly. I'm actually that young. Yes, but uh, it was. Yeah. Um, I would say this was nineteen early early ninety nineties. Uh, so, yeah, maybe ah. nineteen ninety three or so. You're right, because uh, the four eighty six prior to Pentium, it arrived nineteen ninety two or something. Yeah. 
Which, which was... So I didn't start it that much earlier, but uh, this was like, you know, um, like, you know, two years earlier, you had, you know, these Commodores or whatever. And this, I would say, 1991 was the time where everyone uh, migrated to PCs from, from... Yeah, this is... Okay, so, um, yeah, interesting. And what you did, what was the first action with the computer? Uh, just playing games. It was... Which? What games? Uh, I did all these those uh, DOS games, so Commander Keen or Prince of Persia, the DOS version, or, yeah. mm-hmm. like, Prehistoric. It was a game called Prehistorics. You had to bang up uh, dinosaurs, stuff like that. Just jump and run, and yeah. some summer games, of course, and and all that. Doom, of course. Joystick Destroyers. Yes, yes. Jo- joystick Destroyers. Absolutely. And... And uh, yeah, I um, a friend had uh, four eighty six, and he showed me Wing Commander. I never played that on, on on back then. I, I was actually completely uh, excited, but uh, yeah, but I never played that. But I know that it ran on four eighty six, and then Pentium came. Okay, so you started to pl- to 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 or started you played games. What happens then? So how what is the transition to programming or scripting or Bash scripts? Uh, I think it was, uh, I wanted to have uh, Linux on my machine. And for that, I had to format the whole thing because I only had one hard disk. And then I, mm-hmm. I, I, there was SUSE Linux. And SUSE would give out those, or you could buy those uh, big packs where you had multiple CD-ROMs. And then you would install from that. And it, exactly. it was was amazing. And I wanted to try it out because I never used uh, Linux before. So uh, I had to format uh, a lot of times. And... Um, Yes, this this got me yeah. got me started and, and showed me how how to to do things and fail all the time. Mm-hmm. Why you wanted to try out Linux? I was just curious. I just wanted to to learn what's what's possible and and of course um, it it wasn't that easy to to do something with uh, with DOS um, or or the mm-hmm. early Windows versions and uh, Linux was was for me more accessible. But how you got the idea? Because uh, you know, if you if you just played games and Linux was like there, there were no games, not even you know a great graphical software like I don't know Paint Shop Pro or something was not available at Linux back then. So uh, I don't know, was it a friend or I, I mean, you know, how to get the idea to Linux? Because in my case, uh, I wanted I, I needed a compiler and Linux was free and Windows was expensive, so it was uh, easy for me and I was excited about unix and i hoped it looks a little bit different to windows so i said okay maybe it looks different or whatever so what's in your case i guess it was from the from from the router because i saw that you could build something oh. really cool and it, it would fit mm-hmm. on a disc and it was also it was free of course this was one of the parts but i think the i think linux was free but you had to buy like the the cd roms to to install it mm-hmm at the uh, ESDN time, ISDN or ESDN, I remember there was a trend or trend what was very popular building uh, software routers for ESDN. You know, like uh, the uh, voice voice boxes and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, what's what's the name of the software? Was it Asterisk? No, you remember mm. the router? No, because back then it was later. Java was already available. And this was the you know the peak time of all the software routers, home routers. Mm-hmm. So I just I never I, I wanted to use, but never had time for it. But everyone talk about you know the how to uh, create you know software router for ISDN calls and uh, and the uh, uh, Twilio I think is the name of the company. They started professional with that, so you could you know uh, get uh, SMS messages, whatever. Not with the ISDN, but this was the early beginning, so it, it was interesting. So okay, and you managed to install SUSE. Yes, I did. <laughs> no, but it's not that easy. I, I I started prior to to SUSE with Deutsche Linux distribution DLD. So I have now to decompose my machine to find out you know the exact chipset number or whatever. So it was uh, more evolved than than than. And SUSE was uh, easier with. Uh, how it's called the installer? It was uh, there was a specific SUSE installer, and then I switched to Red Hat yes. because I liked this a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was the, uh, SUSE was green, brown and green back day, right? So the box was like dark, dark brown with, and SUSE was green. Light, light green, what yes. Was it? Light green, yeah. 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 So this, yeah. interesting. And what you did with Linux then? Uh, basically nothing, just just played around. And um, I switched back to the, to the mainstream DOS, uh, Windows, and then later uh, Windows 59, um, mm-hmm. um Yes, a, a, a ninety-five and a ninety-eight and all that, and yes, and then in in uh, in school we had uh, learned Turbo Pascal, 
uh, which was mm-hmm. very attractive for me. And then um, I st- was it your first first two language? I, I I guess so. So if you don't count like sh- uh, Bash scripting um, uh, mm-hmm. or command line scripting, so I did I did that a lot. And you and, and you enjoy that? So you get it from from the beginning, or yeah, uh, I like that, and um, I liked it so much that I got into HTML. So I wanted to do websites, and it was it was crazy. I was back then there was GeoCities, and everything was hosted on GeoCities. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, this was was really fun because you could get a, a free web space and you could have an FTP uh, client and, and upload your HTML files. So this was very basic and was fun. And yeah, that that's how I got started with uh, with programming. Okay, cool. Um, and was I don't why you enjoyed that? So I mean, because you know, there th- th- there needs to be something, right? So you enjoy to to interact with the computer, or you wanted to build something specific, or 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 why you like you know programming. I, I just wanted to see how it works and wanted to understand. And um, it was it was great to have something uh, on the internet. This was uh, a, a little bit before I say, um, um, or what was the site called? The social media ne- network MySpace. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah, right? it was absolutely huge, and you and uh, and it was a little bit before that. And when MySpace came up, you could have these HTML snippets and and moving fonts mm-hmm. and all that. This was the crazy HTML times, and you were at MySpace. Um, uh, I guess so. We we had yes, everybody had to be at MySpace. Yes. Yeah, I missed that. This is this is a funny story. So everyone, I said, like, okay, and then it died. So okay, this was a time saver, and I also missed Facebook. So uh, for, for me, this is always this, and I always missed all the trends uh, with the software. But I, I observed in MySpace, but I think it was hacked once, right? Or multiple, uh, several times. You could uh, access uh, other users' data or whatever with the HTML. But um, MySpace was huge, especially for musicians and artists, right? This was like, uh, yeah, like very like Facebook, I would Absolutely. say. Absolutely. It would be interesting to know why why Facebook took over. It would be interesting, right? Because it was hugely, hugely successful, and then Facebook came, right? I don't know. Yeah, we should. We should. Uh, maybe I should invite uh, Mark Zuckerberg to my podcast and you know, talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. What was his fr- <laughs> first computer? <laughs> uh, very cool. So you started with HTML because you're motivated by MySpace, and um, but uh, without Turbo Pascal, right? I guess with no. This this was done then. Uh, Turbo Pascal was okay. was was back in the in the drawer for for that time, and I started to teach uh, HTML class, so an elective class in school. Um, and this was how I really got hooked on, on the whole software thing because I saw that um, it was great uh, sharing knowledge with others. Uh, so maybe this is something where my conference uh, organizing passion comes from. And uh, this this was great. And then I started working in an internet cafe back then. So yeah, wow. this, nobody remembers those places. So <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of them. And there was an internet cafe um uh, in our rural area and this was great for people to get on the internet and there was a problem because we always had to like reset the, the computers after somebody used it because we wanted to make sure that um, privacy mm-hmm. is, is given to, to people because you could read the, the browser history and everything and so I S- serverless computing almost everything is reset you know yes yes I, I, I and I, I tried to build something like that to uh, to automate uh, the reset of the of the workstation and of course it had to be fast so it was no solution to like uh, uh, image the whole thing every time somebody left the, the computer and the next person would come along and and uh, do their thing and so yeah this was was crazy uh, windows scripting stuff to delete everything. And make mm-hmm. a, give give a fresh user profile basically to to the next one that is coming along using the computer. Yeah, internet cafes were huge, so I misunderstood you. Just you know, I think you went to Starbucks and hacked something, but there were no Starbucks back then, I think. But um, yeah, uh, they were really huge and uh, were everywhere in every city. There was an internet cafe, and this was like almost like you know, I remember it. Th- th- there was like an attitude. If someone had an internet cafe, he was you know the hero. So this was uh, <laughs> what, what, what I remember. Um, yeah, um, yeah, cool story. And this was uh, everything uh, was in Weiden. Uh, no, this was an even smaller town. It's called uh, th- this Internet Cafe was in Erbendorf, so it's uh, way smaller. It's uh, uh, and, and is it a, a proper Bavarian forest or still not? Nah, forest? No, 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 not what. You, okay, for people that are not from here, this is Bavarian forest. But for us, this is not Bavarian forest. So. Yeah, but this is like difference of thirty kilometers at most, right? Yeah, a little bit more, but yes. 
Uh, okay, so something like this. Okay, um, and uh, for for people who are listening and wondering why I'm speaking about Bavarian forests, because I really like Bavarian forests. It's a great area. This is like uh, German Canada, I would say. A little bit quiet and uh, and nice. And uh, yeah, this is why. And and the Weiden, where the conferences take place, is very close to Bavarian forests. So uh, I thought, okay, this is Bavarian forest. And Richard says, no, 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 we are not Bavarian forests. So, like, this is a pity. I, I would just you know rename it to Bavarian forest. So this is like. What would happen between us? In Java user group Weiden. Okay, it's also nice. If you can attend Java user group, group uh, Weiden is also organized by Rihate, right? Yes, and we still not call it uh, ba uh, Bavarian Forest user group. Still, uh, no. it's Java user group Oberpfalz, actually. So we try to be inclusive. But Bavarian Forest is also in Oberpfalz, so it's included then. Ah, okay. Very good. So, um. What we had, so you started with HTML, you give HTML classes without a server or use Apache, I guess, back then, right? Oh, it, it was uh, without a server. So the classes were uh, just on like HTML files that you would open with a browser. There was no like... P Netscape. Uh, Nets yes, Netscape, um, uh, Internet Explorer, and there was no uh, PHP or server-side scripting involved at first. So uh, th this was like, there were like three times I, I'd say, for JavaScript, there was the time everybody had JavaScript on, and there was this what a time where everybody had JavaScript off, and now you need JavaScript again to run your web pages. And this was in the glorious time where everybody had JavaScript on and got hacked all the time. Yeah, you remember Netscape Compo Composer? Of course, I, I used it. Yeah, this was Netscape Composer or Netscape Navigator and the Messenger. What was the name of the Messenger oh. back then? Netscape Mail or something yeah. like this. So there was a mail, there was like a Netscape suite. So you got also a big box with CDs and you can install the Navigator. Then the Composer was like an editor, so visual editor. And then the mail system, which became Thunderbird later. But I don't know what's the name of the origin Netscape software. Netscape Messenger, I think. Netscape Messenger. I don't remember. Sounds, sounds good. But they look also great. The, the entire design, you know, with the uh, Lighthouse, I really appreciate it somehow. It, it looked Really nice, uh, the Netscape software. Absolutely, and it it was uh, composer was way better than uh, than front page. Front page yeah, introduced yeah. so much tags and so much so much uh, unnecessary so source code, and uh, the composer was really clean. So the, what you see is what you get. Experience was really really nice. Mm -hmm. But it crashed sometimes. But uh, beside that, it it really worked well. So and, and you teach classes at school or where? Yeah, at school. Back then. Yeah, and uh, the, it was like gymnasium or what uh, yeah, kind of school was it? And you were allowed to teach? Uh, yes, for an elective class. So it was uh, in the afternoon, and um, this was a, a program where you could, as a, as a student, you could teach a class, and um, they would give you the room, and uh, it was great. I had uh, 10, 15 people attend, and they uh, learned um, how, to, how to do HTML. And they were uh, students as well, or excellent people? Uh, were almost uh, all students, and uh, also some teachers came and had a look um, what this well, crazy internet stuff is doing. And, and they appreciate it. I, I mean, because you know, this is uh, unusual that you know the students go to school once again. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I did, and I think uh, the people that came did. Nobody forced them to come, so it was uh, no, sure was was good. So what happens afterwards? So as I would say HTML is almost programming because at least we have tables, which TR and TDs, a little bit more complicated back then. And back then, every, everything was a table. I spent a lot of time with table layouts back then. Absolutely. You know, this was, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, regarding JavaScript, <clears throat> the story was at the beginning, there was thin client. This was the name. Mm -hmm. And you were not allowed to use JavaScript. And uh, I, I worked for a company, for an insurance company back then. And what we had to do is to have mouse over over a button, and the button was an image. Mm -hmm. So, in if the mouse moved over the button, you have to know to to uh, push the button or to provide them some effect. And this back then it was impossible to do with without CSS. Mm -hmm. So we had to use JavaScript. And the funny story is there were two departments: design department and I don't know IT department. And the IT department, I'd say, uh, you are not allowed to use JavaScript. But the designer uh, uh, department wanted to have you know the mouse over button, so there was no way to program the software officially. Mm -hmm. So, and I always knew a little bit JavaScript, but I never said that uh, loud because back then JavaScript was more like 
worse than Visual Basic. So if you admitted that you know JavaScript, you were out. So so you are not a serious developer. So if someone would ask me, so yeah, I did a little bit scripting, but I never mentioned JavaScript back then. So now now it is okay, you know, to mention that you know JavaScript, but back then was a no go, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, a funny story that did you tell it this way because uh, what I did was I built web shops with PHP and um, and JavaScript and and mm -hmm. did a lot of work with Visual Basic and um, I always loved Visual Basic so I had to do mm -hmm. uh, C++ and Visual Basic for some some freelance work I did after school and mm -hmm. I I I'm deeply in love with uh, Visual Basic six because I this mm -hmm. was great times and it was uh, what you see is what you get experience um, I really loved it. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it was great. It was it was it was very productive also. It had to be. Uh, Visual Basic and Access and all the data bases were uh, very productive. Uh, but I had to learn it afterwards. I, I knew Java. I then tried to learn Visual Basic just for curiosity. It was really hard for me because the I remember it was really hard to find code. Right, the code was in the in the um, event handlers or somewhere. Yep. It was not like in Java. So, yeah, th and this was this was. Visual Basic was hard for me, and what also was hard was Flash, mm -hmm. because uh, Flash had uh, it was really hard to know to to have a a, a block of code. You you had to click to the I think keyframes somewhere, and and you find uh, and you found then you know the 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 event handlers. And I always now it would be not a problem at all. But back then I said how it's everything working? Everything is distributed. Lots of you know snippets and how this is working. But um, yeah, and but what I heard is that if, if they converted Visual Basic to .NET, it became almost like a C sharp, right? So because uh, the all the languages are very similar, then. But I I totally lost track, so I I never went back to to Visual Basic after that time. Why not? I had I had to too much work in, in the Java space to do it. Ah, okay, but but we are not a Java, so you, you said okay, so you teach um, HTML and then you did a little bit Visual Basic. What happens then? Uh, then I met uh, Marcus and we started working on uh, XPage and Marcus, Marcus Kett, Kett, right? Yes, right. And how how you met him? Uh, I sometime I sh I, sh I showed up in his office and and uh, talked to him because I uh, he was located in the in the same uh, city and um, okay he already did uh, a lot of things in the in the in the web space and. And with uh, website builders, and I, I loved that mm -hmm. idea, and I, I knew the product, and um, yeah, then I then I showed up, and uh, we got to to talking, and um, I was fascinated, and then then we worked together on on XPage, and um, this was a was a. And you were still at school, or was it after this? Uh, it was after school then, and um, but it I did did some freelance work in that time. And I, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I was I was searching for uh, basically work and and what's what's interesting and this was very interesting uh, because they already had uh, the X page was a was a tool to generate static websites what you see is what you get um, and it was it was better than the front page and um, Netscape Composer because you really got what you see is what you get um, either with applets or with HTML output so you could. Uh, with mm -hmm. Java Swing design and UI, no, co no code, no code involved, just drag and drop, mm -hmm. and it was great. And then you would, uh, it would give you an applet that would do exactly that. And this was the Flash time, so it was totally okay for people to have like a Flash or applet site yeah. and and work with that. So there was a Antenna Bayern Jet was a really big thing in 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 Bavaria or maybe Germany, mm -hmm. where a lot of people. Uh, were chatting and it was Spin Chat, the company, and they had this Java-based, Java applet-based Java chat, and there were mm -hmm. like so many people on it. It was it was it was crazy. And um, if you were a moderator in in one of those chat rooms, you were like the king of I don't know, uh, but you had a, you had yeah. a lot of, lot of power. So this this was crazy. And 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 so applets were accepted, and so we did applets. But then the um, People wanted to have uh, search engine optimization and uh, wanted to have HTML sites for ac accessibility and stuff like that. So um, we we focused more on HTML output, and this was crazy because this was uh, like uh, after the. But wait a second, you, you you teach at school, then you became freelancer. Yes. And we, and, and you did PHP and and uh, JavaScript. You said yes. right. And then you wanted, you know, to to do some more work, and then you joined Marcus. Yes, right. And and the and and, and X page was 
was a tool what you see is what you get which generated uh, H, um, HTML and applet so it could also generate an applet from what you see as from from a visual design yes. right this was this the visual design was you, written in java everything was written in java yeah so you walked you, you met uh, marcus and said look i would like you know to have some contracts what we can do right so and uh, and you started to work with him as a as a freelancer right uh yes in, in, in the first place and then i joined the company so what is your first contract and uh, from marcus uh you remember this i give you a pizza and and and, and you tell me uh, things you know <laughs> ah, okay <laughs> so really? yeah it, it was fun this this was not work this was uh, this was just pure joy this was uh uh, this was finding people that uh, that had the, the same interests. So this was this mm -hmm. was not about money. This was about uh, discovering uh, technology. This was interesting times. Not not like today when and people always ask uh, for money first. But this was uh, there was like not YouTube or internet or um, so. If you are in the Bavarian woods, it was not common to find people that would understand your thoughts about software development and, and browsers and mm -hmm. HTML and all that. So this was just pure fun. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, but what was your first proper contract then? But in one point of time, you had to do something or implement the, the pizza. You add the pizza, or now you you explain everything. What uh, after a week of of explanation, you you synchronized you know the knowledge with Marcus. Yeah, we we did we did a lot of optimization for uh, different browsers because we had to. Ah, um, okay. Our HTML code was uh, not not uh, yeah, uh, not nice anymore. Uh, at, uh, after f uh, f a little bit time, because we had to introduce proprietary attributes for uh, Netscape or Conqueror or uh, Safari mm -hmm. or Opera, uh, because Internet Explorer was dominant, and um, but Internet Explorer would render things differently than, uh, as, let's say, Netscape, and it, and mm -hmm. we had uh, the positions weren't right anymore, and so we had little offsets, and we had to calculate those offsets and. There were proprietary uh, uh, attributes in the HTML tags that would only be interpreted by, let's say, Netscape or later Firefox or whatever. And then we had to render those into the HTML uh, source code. And the HTML source code got a little bit bigger uh, with that. But uh, with that, we managed to have the exact same output for every browser. And this was like the, the, the unique thing about XPage or XPage that we could do that. And you would design it once and it was a basically a Java feature, run it everywhere and HTML run everywhere in every browser and look the same. This is not such a big problem today, but back then this was like huge. Yeah. I uh, already invited Marcos to the podcast, but he didn't explain it this as well as you did. So uh, no, um, you know that the cross browser functionality and design, uh, this was the feature. So actually XPage should really take off then, right? Because if, if you think about this, it was, uh, it was, it did take off. It should be larger uh, than than it, than it was, oh, right? Yeah, it was for us. It was fairly large. So we had over uh, two thousand uh, two hundred fifty thousand uh, confirmed or registered installations. And it was one day I was at the at the newsstand, and there was this magazine, so computer magazine and PC magazine mm -hmm. and chip and and what you got and. Um, so Marcus, he's the the the, the business uh, guy, and he had uh, great ideas. So he would make a deal with the with, with the, the 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 magazines that they would get a, a copy of X page for their C heft for their for their uh, magazine CD, and mm -hmm. X page was on these CDs, and this was great. So this this was cool to have to see that the software you built was on actually on yeah. CDs. So which year was it? 1998? No, this was uh, already 2003, 2004 or so. Okay. And you also attended back then uh, the JAX conference and stuff like that in Germany, OOPs? Or no, not? no, no, no. Why not? I don't know. We we, we were busy working. So because, um, we attended this, systems. Met... Systems. We attended systems yeah. in Munich and, and CBIT. Mm -hmm. We did CBIT, yes. You remember the company called Espresso? At the systems, they had a huge booth. It was a Java applet uh, e-commerce store, like uh, multiple levels. It was like you know, I just remember because they were huge and everything was Java. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then, at the same time, what you did with uh, XPage, I had to implement an e-commerce solution, of course, and a content management system. And my uh, and the company, uh, I was uh, always a freelancer, but they say, okay, look at the Espresso's interesting story, and they look really impressive. And and systems. 
it was a, a, a conference in Munich. It was huge. There was a traffic jam on the at the uh, highway. Yeah. So uh, it was it, it it and then it died suddenly, right? But it was back then. It was huge and it was really interesting conference because it was everything was there. It was you know from software to hardware to to mobile phones. Every every everyone was there. It was really. I really appreciated these systems. Yeah, we liked it too, and uh, and we had a booth there and and showed uh, X page to to people and they liked it. So and yeah, and this was back then when you, when you sold software in a in a in a package with a CD and a, and a printed book and yeah. all that. So yeah, this was good times. Yeah, and uh, after optim after the browser optimization, you joined the company or you joined earlier? I, I joined earlier. The, the first thing that I worked on was the browser optimizations. And then you joined. Yes. So uh, then you um, now um, okay. So what happened then? So you worked with XPage. What you did then? So the browser optimizations, I think, is ongoing task, but something else different or interesting. Yeah. And you learned Java and sorry, uh, you learned Java and XPage yeah. or before? Yeah. No, no. I, I learned it with XPage, and um, it was a was a great experience. Also, there was a, a Florian Naumann, which is a, a programming god, I'd say. Um, he knew this was the time where there was no Stack Overflow and nothing, and he kn knew everything. You know, you could ask him every uh, every little detail. He would he could explain it to you, and this was was fascinating for me. So, yeah, this was great. I, I think I met him, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah he he was in uh, Marcus' company. Yeah, uh, nice guy actually. Yeah, uh, I didn't knew that he's a uh, like like this. So he's a, a little quiet guy, but he has uh, no. Infinite knowledge. Yes, uh, seems like underseller. Yes, he has uh, really big knowledge. Yes. Yeah, interesting. So, um, what is the impression of Java? Because in you know PHP, Visual Basic, and now Java comes. I mean, I mean, what I know is that the Visual Basic people didn't appreciate Java at all because it was not as or, or, or the same is for Delphi. So the Delphi people say, okay, Java is not as nice as Delphi. They still use it. And uh, what's um, what what I found out in the podcast, which I never suspected is that people who worked on low level you know c and assembler they really appreciated java so for me it was no if you really know you know the uh, low level programming you should hate java because you are very restricted but they really appreciated what java did and uh the visual basic people and delphi people they don't like java that much because the visual editors were better than java so this was my you know after uh, some podcast this was my impression absolutely same same for me i hated java with a passion because it was so like verbose and um, you had to always have classes and and then no visual editor and nothing and uh, so I, I, I swing was okay but it was too much work to to write all the code and this you remember the IDEs you used back then uh, yes it was Eclipse NetBeans um, but Eclipse was later I don't think you, oh, you said 2003 okay then, this then was Eclipse. very very uh, early Eclipse it was like extremely slow mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. uh, we work mainly with uh, with eclipse and then we we found out that people wanted to have more inter interactivity with their websites and this is where we came up with the the idea of the xdev ide and uh, the xdev ide was basically a, a, a ui builder for java swing and uh, you would get to have code uh, today you would call it low code or no code tool and you could have like a visual basic a code editor and we implemented mm -hmm. a visual basic um, syntax you could write basically visual basic code and it would translate or transpile to uh, java code and as alternative you could uh, draw a nazi schneidermann struktogram yeah, and this is the uh, this is Nazi Schneider is the uh, diagrams. This is like the boxes, you know, like the, the how it's called the r route route. I think it looks like, and this is if else, right? So if this else is like, and this loop is, and and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And so and you could do a subset of uh, of uh, Java. So you had three choices for your uh, coding preference, and and this is what I really liked because we we uh, enabled people to work with this that uh, did not have programming experience but knew how it should look like or were able to use PowerPoint. And mm -hmm. with this, we brought a lot of people from other technologies to Java because this was finally, in my experience, likable because I like this. This was like Visual Basic but mm -hmm. with way more uh, possibilities. Um, 
if you if you say such a thing, right? So f- for me, if I if if I think about it, it's like Mission Impossible that you can actually build such a thing with a smaller team. How big was the team back then? Uh, four people. <laughs> and how, how long did it took you know until the first you know the prototype? Oh, maybe for, for the first prototype uh, a year or so. I, I don't know, mm-hmm. but it was fast and it. But this is it was still incredible. It was very agile. So we we did not know that we were doing like uh, agile development because it was was it was absolutely clear to us how to work. So we would always work like. Hey, this is a good idea. Let's try this, and then you yeah. would fail. And it was very fast feedback. And we were sitting in the office um, basically every day until late at night discussing programming things. So this was uh, this is like a, a gone era for me. So yeah, mm-hmm. same same here. So I, in the e-commerce, so we just brought the software, right? So and and because we are afraid that uh, we introduce too many bugs. Because refactoring, even back then, so I started a little bit earlier, not even refactoring worked, you know, um, uh, well enough. So we just, you know, implemented a small feature and tested this immediately. So this was, and, and then as Agile came out, I couldn't understand what they are talking about. So, <laughs> and, and after, as as as, as uh, Waterfall uh, came out, so I thought I thought I'm too stupid. So I said, okay, this is, I, and I'm not able to draw a diagram, you know, up front, and to make it work afterwards. Because if I started to code, I always forgot something. It's like, oh, I forgot this box and this box. I went back and then and then it's okay, this is not for me. I'm I'm just not too smart, you know. Um I have to do something different. And then as Agile came again, so I just, you know, talked to to my project uh, um managers, uh, we do agile to get rid of a waterfall, which was uh because if you think about it, this is what I talk, you know, um, now and uh, what waterfall is almost dead, but what uh what what I observed back then is in in nature nothing is waterfallish right everything is agile so whatever you do is agile so only software someone got the idea that that we have to do waterfall and uh, and this was a mistake absolutely yeah this is incredible well uh, this uh, and this xdev is still around right yeah it's, uh, when you go to our website xdev dot software. Um, mm-hmm. you can still download it and we we worked on it um, uh, on the last months to make it compatible to Java 17, Java 21. Um, yes, this is still around, still works and um, basically the, 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 the motivation for it uh, was to bring people to Java that used um, Fox Pro, Oracle Forms, Access, FileMaker, all these tools that had some limitations and people put so much work and had so so great solutions in them and they were not able to reproduce this with Java, but they needed to go to Java for um, licensing reasons. They built, some people, they built amazing software, not software developers, these are just regular people. They, ju- they, they just built it, just did it, and they had a software mm-hmm. and the whole company was using it. And then they want to roll it out to the whole company um, worldwide, and it would cost um, a lot of money to buy access licenses for everybody so they didn't do it or something like that. Or in they had some memory um, or disk space limitations for their databases. Mm-hmm. And then they wanted to migrate to Java and XF was perfect for that. And also giving you all the libraries that Java had. So a lot of people were doing CRM systems or something in, in that space. And they only, always wanted to hook up to a telephone system to, to, uh, to get notifications of incoming phone calls or to call directly from the screen um, to, of course, to a telephone that would stand next to them. This was before nobody mm-hmm. had a telephone. And yeah, this was, was, was a great time. And there are a lot of solutions still around that use Java Swing. There's a crazy IDE um, from a crazy uh, company that used Swing to build their IDE. And um, we did the same. Um, but we always got like bad press for using using Swing and everybody was pissed. Uh, only people that know about Swing. People that don't know that it's Swing, they love it. But IntelliJ is also based on Swing. Yeah, right? this was, was my reference. Okay, uh, because uh, everyone said, okay, uh, swing looks bad. It's like, what's about IntelliJ? Looks great. It's like, yeah, but the swing. It's like, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I always liked swing, I have to say. Uh, st- I still like it. So, um, and um, Java Fix is also okay. So this is uh, one step further. But uh, swing was um, perfect. Okay, so uh, now I'm interested in, in XDEF. So what you did at the company, so, um, was there any transition? You're still at the company and working as before or or what? Yes. No, with- I- I'm still here. Mm-hmm. I'm still here. Just Marcus left. And Marcus left. So the you know the your your inspiration left the company. Yes. So, 
then okay that's even more interesting because uh i i i knew that you are working on xdev but i didn't knew that this is the entire history of your, of your company right so um uh or, or your company uh, your history with the company so um you you said back then you started with xdev and XDev, xdev was ide to enable non developers you know to to do more java um was it successful from the beginning no not not from the beginning so we had uh, we had some uh, customers that would use it and of course it had uh, it, it, it 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 the word had to go out and it was um yeah, it was difficult because we were up against uh, like companies like Oracle or uh, Microsoft or yeah that were enabled. They had uh, they had a lot of tools and yeah, but um, we we tried to make it obvious that we wanted to do the right thing. So we made the software or the the, the frameworks beneath. There was a mm -hmm. there was a, a application framework that we provided with a, a solution. Um, and it was open source, so people could could see what we did. So people could. What's the name of the framework? Uh, X API. It was just X API. Was, okay. we, we weren't good at naming, but uh, th and this is also around. It's on GitHub now, and uh, people can look at it. And it we retrofitted it a little bit to work with uh, Java 17 and now and uh, Java 21. And uh, yes, but people build a lot of uh, stuff with it, and they wanted to be sure that. Um, this would still work in the future, and um, this I think this was a big selling point that we provided this as open source, and people could really uh, see that and uh, were not reliant on us because everything we did was just we just generated code, and it was all in the end plain basic Java code, and it was this this code generator was really nice, um, and you could just compile it with Java C and work with it, and you you didn't have to rely on the on the whole uh, software system or uh, XF IDE that we built. And um, later, uh, customers migrated to IntelliJ or Eclipse or whatever, and and uh, and use that when they got more proficient with uh, Java Swing, um, and they didn't want to use the UI builder anymore. They did just that, and uh, everything still works. And of course, you can still use XF because we still support it. So XPage was uh, for HTML and JavaScript generation, right? Right. And applets and XDev. Also generated the backend, or what? What's the difference between X page and X? Ah, we we skipped the HTML part because this was was getting too hard to maintain that. So we skipped that. We mm -hmm. only did uh, web start, which I really liked, um, applets and yep. um, a Java applications. So it was basically Swing applications. And uh, with the fall of Swing, as Oracle uh, declared that there would be Java FX and uh, this whole debacle mm -hmm. that I I truly hate. To, until today because mm -hmm. it was perfectly good. Swing is still perfectly good. But Oracle said, no, Swing is deprecated now. And then everybody hated Swing. And so we had to move. So we moved to a different UI. So we moved to Warden. Back then it was mm -hmm. uh, Google Web Toolkit. So GWT uh, compiled mm -hmm. JavaScript. And now it's Web Components, which is really, really, really great. And uh, now the project, uh, the product is called Rapid Clips because we also moved from our own IDE, and it was too much work to provide all, uh, all the things. Like we had to write our own own plugins for uh, SVN Subversion or Git or Maven, and we had to get rid of that work. And so we could focus only on the, the things that 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 make made us unique. And this was uh, the code generation of the UIs and all this um, rapid development features and so we moved that all to to eclipse plugins and uh, used warden to render the uis but this is interesting because at the beginning you said you generated swing but how swing communicated with the backend so you use rmi or remote procedure or or, or what do you use yes. xml rpc soap oh. so you could use rmi if you wanted to have a server, but, but a lot of these uh, applications were just fat clients. So you would have no server or Java backend. You would have a Swing application that would talk directly to a database server. And basically the database server was uh, the thing. And, and a lot of people already had a lot of stored procedures. And for somebody that used the database server for their backend logic and had the stored the logic and the stored procedures, this was just great. And they would just use it as, as UI builder and wouldn't do much like in the UI. They would to do basically everything mm -hmm. in desktop procedures. In one project, Eclipse RCP was set, so I had to use it. So it was not Swing, rather than Eclipse RCP was the, the standard for uh, for clients. And we had to know to build uh, challenging software. It was like a network, uh, yeah, a network graph, mm -hmm. more or less. 
And uh, I thought, okay, there's no way that we can do client server here because uh, this is hard to explain. But what I wanted to have is all entities attached in the in the persistence, so they are attached to the entity manager, so extended uh, uh, context, and uh, then the user could just work with the entities. Mm -hmm. And the save button was basically commit. So all, all user changes were stored you know, immediately in the database. And what you get out of that was that the entity manager calculated the diffs for mm -hmm. you. Because um, if, you know, if, you, if you directly manipulate the object graph and you alone the system, the entity manager says, OK, this entity changed only the, the, this field and generated a more or less efficient SQL query and sent it to the database. But if you distribute the application, you have the problem right now because the you cannot interact uh, with the entities or you could interact with DTOs, but then you have to calculate by yourself what change on the server and invoke some kind of an of an interface to communicate with the backend. And the funny story is with the Fed client, I called it Fed client, but I get lots of trouble with it, but it was a Fed client. So um, they say, okay, don't 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 talk about uh, Fed clients, call it rich client. So okay, rich client is just you know, the rich eclipse, but we are building Fed client. The entire business logic is in the client. And um, we uh, build it with uh, the remaining budget, which was dedicated just for the documentation. And prior to that, multiple companies tried to use application servers, you know, with proper with uh, proper communication. And this was, I don't know, there were like hundreds of developers trying to you know to achieve the same. And there a small team of developers just built a Fed client. And the interesting thing is, the um, internal architect really hated me because uh, he wanted to prove that I'm wrong. But uh, we were on budget, uh, everything worked, but he he really hated fat, fat client. And then he also got the idea to generate everything, but uh, I mean, we were already done. And what we could also do is like, uh, we could track, you know, because there, we had also batch jobs. So if the entities changed, um, we could show what changed in real time. Wow. But if you perform the the the, the uh, batch job on the server, you have to communicate back and back then web sockets, whatever. It is far more complicated. And also, uh, we should may maybe mention this. The problem you get with distributed systems and entities is, is deletion is, is the most problem, right? Because let's say uh, you have um, one Richard and uh, five Jacons or 100 Jacons. So there's already no 100 Jacons in the past. And uh, you don't like to transfer to 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 transport all all the history to the client, just a subset. Let's say we have then Richard is the you know the organizer and the three uh, recent Jacons. So now if I delete one and I've sent it back to the server, the server doesn't know what to do. So okay, uh, I have just see you know two Jacons, the last one. Should I delete ninety eight the old ones or how it is meant? Yeah. So you have to introduce your additional APIs. You know to uh, to to um, to cover the corner cases, and uh, this is not clear at the beginning of a project. This is why so many projects failed back then. But with a Fed client, you would never have the issue. But this is also hard to explain, mm -hmm. right? So there are lots of frameworks who try, you know, to attack this issue, but they were not able to because uh, this is always the, you know, the old host systems. They did uh, before image and after image. Mm -hmm. So if you if you change the data, they they had they knew what happens before and after. And in Java, we forgot about that. And you know, there were armies of architects trying to solve this. So this is why I ask you. So in Swing, if you build a Fed client, it was, uh, I would assume, I never saw your software, but it should be perfectly interactive and very convenient. No issues with lazy loading. You know, you could always load something lazy or, or eager. It doesn't matter because you you have you know. The entities, um, whether it is Hibernate, JPL, something similar already, you know, in in the memory. Yeah, abs absolutely. And um, of course, you had a lot of memory uh, because you could load a lot of data if you gave the application yeah. like uh, one gigabyte of, of memory for uh, the, its own, let's say, data cache, or you load it for from the yeah. database. It was was um, very fluent, working. Um, no HTML pages rendering, no JavaScript executing, nothing. This was just. Uh, lightning fast and people still say swing is slow so you know yeah but uh, yeah they say because they they say it but um so um and, and then you introduce vadin and vadin is interesting because it is almost the same because what vadin does it distributes you know the the ui for you so it is like remote procedure code with a servlet so you have the vadin components in the browser 
and there is a VAD in servlet, and if you change the state of the component and replicate the state to the server, and for you, a Java developer feels like a Fed client, which was an interesting decision. Yeah, th that's one of the main decisions why we did it, because it's so much like Swing, and I, I love it. I still give talks today about um, doing just full stack, pure Java, and it's, it's great. It's like t almost 20 years ago, um, when you would just write uh, Swing code, and with Vardin, this feels like... Um, it feels the same, and you get a HTML um, and a progressive web app and, and everything you like, and they take care of that. And you can just write new button. Ah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and now you're talking, okay, the, uh, it t told me that the uh, newest version uses web components. Yes. So now it's become, it is interesting because if you have web components, they are just nothing. It's like, you can be, you know, you, you can have Redux or whatever, or you can have nothing. So how, how do web components communicate with the backend? So what's the change? So with Vardin? Now, you're using Vardin with web components right yes. now? Yes. Okay, there's no problem. So there's just an, okay, you you, uh, you use Vardin uh, elements, I think it's called. Yeah, oh, oh, so you're okay. using the... There, there are two frameworks uh, by Vardin, and they sometimes change their names uh, more often than I like, but... Um, what we use is Vardin Flow. So this is the, the binding, the Java API binding to the web components, which is, is really great if you like to work as with Swing. And then there is a, a newer framework that is called Hilla that is more on the JavaScript side um, for people that maybe don't want to work with Java. And uh, it, it has some advantages in terms of you don't have the, the sync back um, of uh, of the state because you this is always a stateful application um, with Vardin because for every client that it, that is there you have to have to to sync the the, the changes uh, or the actions back to your Java backend and uh, the Java backend has to basically listen to it and and react to it. Yeah. Okay. So you, so for you there was no difference. So the, you just uh, switch you now from Swing to Vardin and what you skipped is GWT which is uh, very good because uh, this GWT. Vardin, you know, cares about the compilation. Uh, back then, I don't know if you remember, this was a, everyone wanted to have a Google Web Toolkit, but if you use it without Vardin, it's terrible. So you have a like, hosted mode and it, it takes forever. So Vardin did a great job to make you know, Google Web Toolkit usable. Without Vardin, Google Web Toolkit was terrible. So I tried, I couldn't even understand why to use it. Totally agree. And uh, that, that's, why I, that's why we uh, love that. And I personally loved it. Uh, very much, and uh, we had uh, great uh, conversations with uh, the guys at Warden. So it was always uh, th this also was a, f a fun part. Yeah. So um, I also worked with Warden once because they wanted me to enable CDI. So this was years ago. So I I, I uh, implement something Warden, and there was also a nice team, nice headquarters. You were in Turku. No, I've, I've never been. There was like a, a power plant, it looked like. So it's really an old old building. So it's uh, really nice nice people there. And um, so now, what is XDEF then? Is XDEF like a, a Vardin IDE? Uh, you, uh, the, the product now is called RapidClips, but you could basically say it is. Um, it has, this is at least one part. So we have this part that is the, that, that provides the UI and the UI builder that generates the Vardin code. And then there is another part that does um, uh, rapid application development things for you provides you with assistance that will help you generate code, data access code, so you can still use it uh, as a no-code tool. So you could have a an, an basic CRUD application um, without any code. You just pull um, pull in on on the, the the UI builder, and if you like to have like a data class, you would uh, there is there is a nice UI. Um, looks like other non or low code tools where you can define okay i have a person this person has a name and and all that and and maybe a birthday and an address and what you like and then uh, if you drag this on a table or on a ui it will generate you a form to enter all this and it will select the appropriate input components for a date a date tag, a date field and for um, a number a number field and if you have a selection it will put you give you a drop uh, drop down a combo box and um, if you put it on a table, it will um, give you the, the columns and say this first name, last name, and you can, with an assistant or a UI, you can select, I don't want to have this field or this attribute in this table, and I, will do, I want to have this and that sorting and all that. And um, on top of all that, which you can do without writing any code, you can just write any Java code you like. And this, mm -hmm. this is just great because this removes the barrier from people that 
do not have Java experience or coding experience um, uh, with people that have. And so teams can work together and, and it's just like, it's a, it's a pure Java project. You can just have any library in it, use it. It's great. What is on the backend? Do you have your own server or you have Java A server or what, what, what is it? So um, it's, it's basically, a, yes, a, a, a servlet um, or, or for, mm -hmm. for, a, for, okay. a for a job for a bot site that renders the, um, the mm -hmm. it gives you access to the, um, to the, to the UI and um, we, you can deploy it on a, a, a application server. And uh, now we use JPA as uh, as persistence layer or micro stream, uh, of course. But um, back with XDEF, we also did something crazy because we were always annoyed with uh, all the, the SQL. And uh, we thought SQL was great, but we wanted to have type safety. So we basically did mm -hmm. the same as, as Duke did, uh, Lucas Eder, with uh, mm -hmm. uh, the type safe SQL. And we had something called SQL engine or SQL engine. And it was basically mm -hmm. the same. You had a type safe abstraction um, or query DSL is uh, basically the same also. Um, over a SQL and it would allow you to construct um, SQL statements without, and it has uh, database abstractions for a uh, variety of databases and it allowed you to uh, formulate your SQL statements in pure Java code. And we also mm -hmm. use that to generate the, the, the calls to the database for the code that you would create by drag and dropping. So mm -hmm. it was not just plain a, a SQL in a string, it was like real Java code that you could come back in later and add it and add maybe a, a, to a, something to the where clause or, 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 or to, to a limit or anything. And it was just pure Java code. And we kind of needed to do that to make it easy because people that don't know Java, they will make more mistakes in writing in a string that has no uh, support. and. If we did it type safe, the IDE with uh, the code completion and all that would give you support. You would just put a put a dot, and then you get code completion, mm -hmm. and you can see: um, Can I add uh, to this where statement? Can I add something, or can't I add something at this mm -hmm. point? And we basically this is uh, domain specific language work, and this was also very very interesting to to do that. Yeah, interesting stuff happened at XF. So it's a pity that you never attended, you know, a conference. So I, I actually we missed, uh, I, I missed completely Markus, and uh, also you. But you, um, so I'm I'm around Munich. You're around Weiden. Maybe there are 150 kilometers or something like this. Or, or so it's not 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 far away. Um, and um, so to to my understanding, so what you can do is uh, if you have a table in a database. So you have a kind of abstraction and you can say, I would like to talk to this table. And then you generate behind the scenes a JPA entity somehow Yes. with queries, which are more or less standard. And you can just uh, use a standard Eclipse in order to edit the entities. And then you can drop the drag the entities to a web component uh, view, or no web component view to a view. And you generate the uh, web component table behind the scenes with filtering and everything, right? Exactly what we do. But this is actually great. Because this is like you know the uh, how to call it the uh, Java no, no no code Java right so just no code so you shouldn't even call it Java this is, this is what uh, everyone you know searches for low code no code solutions absolutely yes this this is what we what we live off <laughs> the last twenty years yes <laughs> uh, one question to you because I, I I lost the track to Eclipse a little bit I just use uh, Eclipse indirectly with Visual Studio Code. So the recent versions of Eclipse, are they have like some great features? So what's the story with Plain Eclipse? So not Rapid Eclipse, rather it's Plain Eclipse. So if I, is it like, because uh, back then it was no huge momentum in Eclipse and everyone was excited about uh, uh, Eclipse. And I, I, so about my relation to Eclipse, a little bit strange because at, in the year 2000, I, I, I killed a lot of JBuilder installation with Eclipse mm -hmm. because I didn't like uh, JBuilder because there was no refactoring and Eclipse uh, was great out of the box. There were no plugins. You could refactor Java code. It worked, and I really liked the look and feel of Eclipse. But then, what I really hated in Eclipse is that every company used different plugin sets, and my my machine was never compatible with anyone. And I said, okay, this is crazy. So I cannot do this anymore. And then I found the NetBeans, and then I started with NetBeans. So this was my Eclipse story. And um, I would like to try Eclipse once, once again. So is it is it worth it? So are you using Eclipse also without Rapid Eclipse, or 
I would say so, but I think this is uh, highly controversial because it's yeah, it's, sure. it's, it's our a, the entire podcast is controversial. Yeah. So, I, so it's what, what you know. So I'm very proficient with Eclipse. If you've worked with a tool uh, a long time, so you know all the shortcuts and everything. And um, the Eclipse uh, team they did a lot of work in making it faster. There were some versions that were really slow, um, and th this is getting better. So and they uh, keep up. There's a uh, release every three months now, so this 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 mm -hmm. was a big change uh, also for us because we also had to provide more frequent uh, updates for Rapid Clips, and um, mm -hmm. yes, uh, it, it depends. So um, I always think there is not uh, not much people anymore that use uh, Eclipse, but then when I when I talk uh, when you at conferences, you always see people using IntelliJ, and I think this is because IntelliJ has a really good good marketing, um, and um, yeah. But, but I, I'm surprised that they got that popular because uh, for regular for 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 companies for larger companies that they buy you know licenses because it's buying a license back then was a huge. It was a painful experience. So it, sometimes it took you know forever to get approval for ten euros or something. So so, uh, but it changed. So um, and I and I have actually IntelliJ for years. But I would also give uh, Eclipse a try again. So um, is are there any killer features in Eclipse? Um, it's open source. Recent? What do you really like? So it's feature which came out it's like I really like it right now in the recent release or something like this. So. Like I'm old in 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 the way I code, so I just do the same things. And um, for me, it's just good that it's that it's faster again. So this is the. But cool. if you haven't used it in a, in a in a in a longer time, you wouldn't notice it because you wouldn't have known the the, the, the slower versions. But yeah, it's just what you what you're used to. Okay. So uh, this is what I wanted to ask you. So you are a CEO or CTO? CEO? These days I'm a, I go as CEO, yes, but I try to to stay on the technical side. So so you are still coding? Not as much as I like to, but uh, uh, sometimes I still code. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing. Okay, thank you. It was a great chat with you. So um, what uh, where people can find you? And just please mention you know the Rapid Clips and your company because it's an amazing story. And also sh uh, send me the show notes so I will put it in the show notes. Yeah, of course. And yeah. So it's uh, uh, Richard Fichtner. It's uh, this is my Twitter handle. You can find me on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Also, we have a website that's called xdev uh, dot software. So it's a crazy domain name, but uh, it's really cool. If the company is called xdev software then you can have this. We also have a domain that's xdev-software.de, but xdev.software is really cool and gives us a lot of trouble if you want to uh, enter an email address with xdev.software. A lot of the regex checkers, they don't they don't allow the .software domain. So this is fun. Never, never. Ne hey, Richard, what you need is x.dev. Also good. Yes, yes. I never, I never thought about that. Okay, I have to yeah, add, add, before we before yeah, we do before right we now. add this, we have yeah. to buy the domain. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, yes, and uh, yeah, go there. It's rapidclips.com. Uh, it's also on GitHub, and if you Google it, you will, you will find it. And um, find me at uh, conferences. Come to JCon. Um, talk to me. I love to talk to the Java community. And um, you asked before um, about we we always missed each other, and we were only 150 kilometers apart. Uh, that's something I carry with me because um, we do these Java conferences to connect people and um, there's always great people that you never heard of. And so I would encourage mm -hmm. everybody to come to the, to the conferences in person and meet and talk. And I would really love to, to talk and meet people and, and uh, dream about software stuff that we, that we love. Mm -hmm. And what I also like, is it still jcon.1? Yes, it's jcon.1. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Great domain. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Adam.